so guys, we're gonna be listening to two horse guys animated. I really don't like these things. They're kind of scary, actually. Like, it just since I already in part paranoid about every single thing, it just gets me more paranoid. But I'm doing it for you guys because I don't care for crap. It is scary. Scary gas station horse. First, a little background <laughs> information. I worked the night shift at a local gas station when I was 19. I was the only employee in the store, as usual. Of course. On Christmas course. Eve, I had to work the overnight. 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. into Christmas oh Day. God, it was a normal family. night. No it's customers, sad. and my cleaning was almost finished. I had just got done eating and decided to go out for a smoke when I someone walking That's towards the store in the distance. Now, this because was nothing out of the cigarette. ordinary. And until the person gets to the pumps and I can actually see them. My it was a male, so about 5'9 and somewhat thin. I like gonna come up he was wearing like, a dark hoodie, jeans, and was carrying a gift bag. As he got closer though, I noticed that he was There's bleeding no from his forehead. From his eyes. As he approached me, I asked there if he was okay and if bag. he needed any one help. Bit, one bit right now. I noticed Nothing that the bag was empty, which should have been my first red flag. Sorry. The guy looked me in the eyes, looking don't dead inside, and Watch said, it. You wanna help? Then don't call the fucking cops. Profanity. I agreed and told him that there was a first aid kit inside and that I'd be happy to help him with his wound. Crazy, I know, but I was just trying to be nice to him since he was someone who could be a threat to me. That's we went I inside the store and I, I got the first aid kit. Him. As I pulled out the stuff for him to clean himself up with, he said he needed to use the restroom and once again told me not to call the cops. I told myself that if he wasn't out of the bathroom within a reasonable amount of time, I was going to call the police. He didn't come out, so I went outside and called. The dispatcher told me to stay out of the store and find somewhere safe to be until the officers arrived. I stood at the side of the store where he wouldn't be able to see me, but I could see if he came out of the bathroom. He never came out. The police arrived and asked where he was. I pointed and they went in. Just as they got to the door, he opened it and tried to lunge at one of the officers. They tackled him through a knife that he was holding and promptly arrested him. As they were walking him out of the store, he told me that I was lucky that the police got there when they did, and that he'd see me again soon. I was a little shook by that. You know, I done moved one to of the officers never came to take my so statement so. after the other took the guy away. You know, I told the officer what had all happened and then I asked something I really wish I didn't know the answer to. What was he doing in the bathroom? The officer told me that it was a good thing that I called when I did, because the guy had shot up some heroin in the bathroom then was going to come out with a knife, stab me, and run with what money was in the register. That's what the bag was for. This guy had a lot of problems and a lot of anger inside of him. The reason he was so angry was also the reason his head was bleeding. He owed his dealer money and got beat because of it. His solution to the problem was robbing the store. The officer told me if I didn't call when I did, I'd either be critically wounded or dead because he wasn't going to allow me to stand between him and that money. I hope I never see that crazy drug addict who wanted to kill me to free himself from well, death weird. again. It's not his voice, it's everybody's voice. One time I went to the bar with one of my friends. I had just turned 21, so I haven't been to many bars up to that point. My friend was drinking on the way to the bar, so he was already pretty drunk when we got there. When I sat at the bar, a cute girl came and talked to me and my friend. She said her name was Candice, and I noticed she had really, really bright red hair. I assumed she dyed it. I, I mean, it was pretty, but unnatural. Anyways, the girl was flirting with me and my friend. She could tell my friend was already very drunk. To be honest, I played along like I was drunk already too, since I it seemed to be one. working for I my no friend. Idea. I didn't know if she was I just trying to get free no drinks, idea. so I told her we didn't have much money. She then offered to buy us drinks. She kept buying us drinks and I started to get confused as to who she liked between me I and my I friend. I saw this one. My friend Dude, went my to the bathroom. Lie, Before he came back, he was kicked out by the bouncers. He was way too drunk. Candace and I went outside with him. She kept telling him to go home with her. He was so out of it, he could barely answer her. 
I told her he was too drunk and that I couldn't let him go anywhere. I didn't want him to wake up hungover in some random house with no car and no idea what happened. Candace kept pushing it, saying that she would take good care of him, but I told her no because I had to stay with him. I was more sober than him and he was my responsibility. I told her the only way he was going anywhere was if I tagged along. I assume she thought I was jealous or cock blocking, but my friend could barely stand and lost interest in Candace already at that point. She immediately started flirting with me and offered to get my friend a taxi to drive home and said we could go to her place alone. At this point I had a few drinks and I was already buzzed, so I agreed. We took my friend to the taxi and walked to her car. I slightly stumbled on the way to her car. Wow, you're pretty drunk, huh? She said, smiling as she held onto my arm. Yeah, I said. I don't know why, but I just felt slightly shy and anxious. Everything was just happening too easy for me, so I felt uneasy. We got in her car and we drove down the street. Wanna stop at the liquor store and get somewhere to drink? I'll buy it, so don't worry about paying. She offered. I didn't want to drink any more than I already did. I mean, I was already buzzed and wanted to be able to carry myself throughout the rest of the night. Sometimes I made myself look stupid when I'm drunk, so I didn't want to ruin anything with Candace more than I already did earlier with telling her my friend was too drunk. I told her I was already drunk enough, but she insisted. I didn't want to seem lame, so I told her to get me a pint of liquor with some apple juice to chase it. She went into the store and came out with a lot more than just a pint. I assumed she wanted to drink more also, and that's why she got a fifth instead of a pint. On the car ride, we passed the bottle back and forth, but she took tiny sips. I tried to take tiny sips, but she kept passing me the bottle and telling me to drink. I somehow managed to drink all of my apple juice, and I pretend to drink the bottle by spitting the liquor into the apple juice bottle. I tossed the apple juice bottle full of liquor out the window before she even saw it. I didn't want her to know that I was acting drunker than I was. I mean, she actually believed I was sloppy drunk when I was simply buzzed. I took a couple more sips of liquor and Guys, I finished you know the bottle. Watch, it's, if it's too Throughout scary, the car but... ride, I called her the wrong name a couple of times to get a reaction out of her. She didn't react to it. She just kept letting me call her Carla without correcting me. For some reason, I thought maybe she lied to me about her name initially. We drove up to her house and I pretended to trip and stumble into her front door. She helped me walk inside by holding me up. She opened her front door, which was unlocked, and we walked into her house. She closed her front door and then she locked it. I thought that was strange, but assumed she didn't want anyone walking in on us. I told her that I had to use the bathroom. I walked into her bathroom, locked the door, and looked in the mirror. I just felt strange. I felt like something was off. I felt myself becoming more drunk from finishing the bottle earlier. I turned on the sink to make noise and made myself puke up the liquor I drank. I flushed, went to the sink and started drinking the tap water out of my hands to sober up. I just didn't want to be drunk but I still wanted to hook up with Candace so I pretended to be drunk. I turned off the sink and I could hear her talking to someone. He's drunk as hell. He can barely stand up. You do it. Who was she talking to and do what? I walked out of the bathroom and into the living room. The moment I stepped into the living room, I saw her walking into another room. All I could see was the back of her head, that strange, very bright red hair go into another room. I didn't see her face or anything. I just saw her kind of walk fast into the room. The living room was pretty dark. Hey, where are you going? I slurred like I was drunk. She walked back into the dark living room and up to me. Let's go in my room. She said. I looked at her bright red hair and then into her eyes. They were different. Her her whole face was different. It was another girl with the same hair, and that's when I realized it was another girl with the same wig on. It was a wig the whole time. She changed it with the girl from earlier for whatever reason. My heart felt like it stopped, but I tried to look like I had no idea it was a different girl. I kind of smiled at her and told her I needed to use the bathroom one more time and told her sorry I was so drunk. She said, It's fine, just hurry up in there. I went into the bathroom and locked the door. I heard her whisper something to someone again. This time I think I heard a male voice whisper back. I honestly didn't concentrate on listening to exactly what she said but something sketchy was going on and I had to get out of that house. 
I opened the bathroom window and jumped straight out of it and ran faster than I ever have in my entire life. I didn't look behind myself or anything. I just ran straight through the backyard, jumped the fence, ran through someone else's backyard, hit a road and ran towards the main road. I kept running down the main road until I saw a star CVS. I ran into the CVS and stood straight at the front of the store in front of the camera. I called a taxi and went home. I try to think of what happened that night. What was she or they planning that night? Why did she tell me a fake name? Why was she trying to get my friend and I, I so drunk? I thought maybe a robbery, that. but she kept spending money on us. She kept buying us drinks and even paid for my friend's taxi cab. And mostly, why did she wear a wig that she gave to another girl to wear? Who was she talking to? What did it mean? And what was in that room they tried to lure oh, me into? The next day after this incident, I went back to the house with a couple of friends to see just what was going on. Nobody was there. No cars, no people, nothing. Just an empty house. I ended up finding out that the house was a summer rental. And whoever those people were, they broke into that house and used it for only that night and never came back. Anyways, that's my story. Yo, that's messed up, bro. Oh, God, I got three. Oh, it's like 20, 32. It was about three in the morning and I was on my way to my job at my local McDonald's to Dude, open with one of my favorite managers my there with me. So she told me to text her when I got there so that she could let me inside. That's a, Once I that pulled in, I noticed a man standing man. outside of his car in the farthest corner of the parking lot. Oh, God, he was so shooting much. me this sort of menacing stare. Let me point out that it's completely pouring outside. I was really confused as to why this guy wasn't just sitting in his car. I then parked and texted my manager to let me inside. Seconds later, I noticed her at the door opening it for me. Upon walking up to her, I say my usual good morning. I was stopped mid-sentence by her rushing me inside and saying, Did you see that guy outside? I told her yes, and she proceeded to help me refill sauces, napkins, and things like that. My manager then told me that she's going to check the security tapes just to make sure that everything during the period that the restaurant was closed was okay. Minutes later, my manager called me into her office for whatever reason. She told me to look at the screen, and it showed that the same man was standing outside. The time was 12.47. She then fast-forwarded the tape to reveal that the man had been standing outside the entire time up until now. And at this point, it's about 3.50 a.m. I ran to the front lobby and I noticed him still standing over by his car. I figured or was hoping that he was probably just on something and he was waiting for us to open so that maybe he could get breakfast. I resumed filling sauces again and making sure everything was in working order until I was abruptly interrupted by banging at the front door. I walked over and noticed a figure right outside the front door. It was the man. I yelled that we were closed and that he would have to come back later. That didn't seem to faze him as he continued to bang on the door. I walked away, figuring that he was just being an asshole when suddenly I heard a loud crash. I ran to the lobby to see the glass door broken and the man beginning to step inside. I yelled for my manager and told her that we needed to leave through the back door. And we did just that. We booked it to our cars and both called the cops. They arrived in about 15 minutes and came outside the restaurant with a dirty looking man in cuffs. They said he was hiding in the back janitor's closet with a large knife in his hand. So that's my story and also the reason I'm never working early mornings again. <laughs> Who would? I've never even work. What? Sorry. Just shut up, Connor. Why? Like, I hate this, though. It's just... Now I'm going to be afraid to go to McDonald's. That's why. Yo. I'm already sketched, bro. What is this, a whole movie? My family and I live in Arizona and we occasionally visit our Navajo family in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We left early to get there by noon or less. 
It is a very long and boring Today's trip there. But we get there before noon and we have time to mess around and talk with our extended family. And we, kids, start to play around till the evening starts to show. The house is too small for everyone to fit and sleep in. Some of the kids have to sleep in the trailer and truck camper, but two of my cousins and I had the amazing luck of sleeping in the old, slightly torn tent. I don't like it so much. We are well asleep at this point and for some unknown reason I wake up. Of course, I'm still tired and rubbing my eyes while yawning, meaning I wasn't well aware of my surroundings. Once I finish rubbing my eyes, I look straight at the entrance of the tent and see a figure illuminated by the back porch light standing in front of the tent. At first I was scared, but thought it was my other cousins just messing with us. As this person was still standing outside our tent looking at us, I turned to one of my older cousins who was two years older than me to wake him up and tell him that someone was standing outside of our tent. He tries to brush me off, but I persist and he turns to me and asks me what I wanted. I tell him to look at the entrance of the tent, and he does. I've never seen someone go from the brink of sleep to sheer panic and alertness in their eyes that fast before. He looks at me with this panicked face and tells me to be quiet. He whispers to me that it's a skinwalker and that we need to be quiet again. We lay there for the longest time and from my memory it was at least an hour or more. We were just about to go back to sleep because it hadn't done anything. Then it started to move around the tent. Remember when I said this was an old tent? Yeah, it had some holes in it. I hate this. Stop. Stop. One of the holes was the size of a quarter and I decided to be brave. As it continues to walk around the tent a fourth time, I slowly crawl towards the hole and try to take a look. As I did this, my cousin told me to get back to the bed or it'll hurt us. Of course, as a kid, I ignore the warning. I'm at the quarter size hole and looking out to see whatever it was. It comes around the hole and what I saw was bone chilling. I bolt back and hide under my sleeping bag while my cousin does the same. This thing decided to stop moving and start looking at us again. I hid under How the covers know? and spent every ounce of energy being scared. And then I finally fell asleep. I woke up early, maybe around 5, and I decided to look around the tent to see if there was anything there. I see footprints, bare footprints that send shivers throughout my body. I saw the footprints move around the tent. This hit me hard because I was now realizing it wasn't a dream. As I further investigate the footprints, I noticed that it went off track. It went off to the rocky hills nearby where we were staying at. I follow the track to the hills, about a football field away from the house. As I continue to follow the tracks, something strange and scary happens. It goes from two footprints walking for a while to footprints and handprints in the dirt starting to form. I found that kind of strange because no person would do that out here. As I followed the tracks further into the hills, the hands and feet started to get smaller and smaller. 
It then subtly changed into coyote paw prints. That is when I stopped and turned back home, first walking fast, then onto a full-on run. When I got back, I sat down on the back porch for a while and thought about telling my family, but I didn't think that they would believe me. In the end, I didn't tell anyone, even the cousin I woke up in the middle of the night. Well, that's my story. I urge you guys to not go into the Navajo reservation to go looking for them. You will bite off more than you can chew. We, my people, take these beings very seriously and do our best to not talk about them. Even though I broke this code, I just thought to warn you guys about them. Whoever is listening are the first people to hear this story. I had a few more stories to tell, but this is by far the scariest one I had. Yo, what is up, guys? Thanks for watching. So this video, since it was 20 minutes, you guys are probably like, oh, that's long. But, like, it was supposed to be longer, but my friend had to call me in the middle of the clip, so it just messed up the whole thing. That's why I just stopped it short. But, yeah, I really don't care if you guys like the video. I think it was a little scary, and that's something I'll be hot to for the rest of my life. Alright, I'm joking, but like, what day is tomorrow? Wednesday. Can't do crap today. So I'm going to do another reaction video tomorrow, probably, because I, I have baseball, I have to get a cello, I have so much stuff to do tomorrow, so I'm just going to do another reaction video after, yeah. So, please subscribe, like, turn on notifications, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!